Good morning, everybody. Um, on behalf of the Drug Information Unit of the University of Illori Teaching Hospital Pharmacy Department, I'd like to welcome each and every one of us to today's clinical meeting. We'd like to start by having opening prayer from Dr. Malik, Dr. Abdurrahim Malik. Kindly unmute yourself, Stan, give us the opening prayer. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dr. Malik. Uh, yeah. Good morning. Uh, we thank uh, the Almighty God today for bringing us together once again on this day, and we hope and pray that we all learn from this uh, clinical meeting. Uh, I open the, the meeting with the Quranic verse, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Rahman Rahim, Malik Kiyomidin, Yakana Abduwa Yakana Ustahim, Yidina Surat Al Mustakim, Surat Al Lazina Alamta Alehim, Gail Madubi Alehim, Walla Loli. Amen. Thank you very much. Yeah, We'd like to welcome each and every one of us once again. Um, I'll start by appreciating Dr. Ibrahim Bello. He's the Deputy Director Pharmaceutical Services of the Drug Information Unit for the Pharmacy Department of UITH. Thank you very much, sir, for the opportunity. Thank you. I'd also you. like to welcome Dr. Solomon. I can see um, Dr. Muziko Olari Waju, she's the head of unit, Deputy Director of Pharmaceutical Services of Oncology Pharmacy for UITH. You are welcome on board, Ma. We Thank also you. like to welcome Dr. Adeola Kola Mustafa. She's currently out of the country on sabbatical. It's nice to have you here. Lastly, I would like to welcome our guest speaker, Mrs. Catherine Onyeja. Thank you very much, Ma, for accepting to be our guest speaker for today. It's a privilege Thank to you. have you on board. And nice we do not take it here. Thank you. We do not take it for granted. So because of our time, I'd like to read the citation for our guest speaker. Mrs. Catherine Onye Jaka is the co-founder and lead coach at Unique Accents Consultancy Limited, a diction public speaking, customer service, and professional ethic coach. She's as well the co-founder of Unique Accent Children Hub, an online hub for children, which specializes in teaching children diction in English, public speaking, poetry, etiquette, and creative writing, with over 200 registered children so far from different parts of the world. She studied English language at the Lagos State University and have undergone other professional courses. So far, she has trained over a thousand people on diction and public speaking, both online and offline with participants from across the globe. She has as well launched two online courses on diction. She's a member of the board of trustees of the Association of Diction Coaches of Nigeria. In 2016, she, together with her husband, were awarded the most creative couple in the education sector by Elitist Magazine. In January 2020, she honored an interview by BBC, that's the British Broadcasting Council, where she spoke on the importance of teaching diction in Nigeria. She's a registered member of the African Women Network, TWAN, and a registered member of Toastmasters International. She's the author of the books, The Public Speaking Guide, an ebook and co-author of The Diction Guide, a mini and audio book. She is happily married with two beautiful daughters. Please everyone, join me in welcoming Mrs. Catherine Onyejiako. You're welcome on board, ma. Over to you, ma. Please oh, unmute it? yourself, ma. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, I truly appreciate. Uh, so can I start? Am I starting? Yes, you have okay. 14 minutes. Okay, 14 minutes. Thank you very much. So today we'll be talking about, this is my first time giving a presentation in a medical setting. Like <laughs> when he told me clinical, um, powerful pre presentation that has to do with clinical, I said, my God. Clinical, okay, we're going to see how that plays out. We hope it comes out very well. Thank you very much once again for having me here. So today, um, public speaking in everything we do in life, I guess we speak to people, no man is an island. Everyone talks to one person or the other, you communicate with people. So at some point in life, everyone has been a public speaker, even though not a professional public speaker. So you are going to be giving um, presentations, you'll be called for conferences relating to your, your field. And for others, you might just be called for something that has nothing to do with your field, just like I am doing now. So but because of this, you want to learn the basic presentation tips, which is what I'm going to be giving us today. And these are tips that will help you conquer state fright, help you prepare very well for your presentation, any kind of presentation you want to give, especially the clinical presentation. So I will be sharing my screen. I guess I have been permitted to do that. So I'll be taking a part of my, this That's is a an excerpt. Check. Okay, yes, I've shared. Can you see the screen, my sharing? I'm sharing now, actually. Can you see it? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay, we can see it. Okay, okay, good. So uh, we are going to be talking about how to conquer state fright because this is what stops many people from giving the powerful presentation they have to give from sharing their ideas. I'll always say that the, the richest place in the world is a graveyard because so many people have died with their very good ideas, very good ideas that could change the world. But because of the fear of state fright, they, they couldn't say anything. They couldn't bring up those ideas that, that could change the world, that could change everything around them, their society. So let's conquer this. Let's see how we can conquer state fright. Although you cannot totally eradicate state fright, but you can manage it. So being able to manage state fright is what makes you a professional speaker. So let's see how, apart from um, state fright, these tips I'm going to give, we, they, there are about 12 of them. All of these tips are going to help you uh, in your presentation skills. So it's not just about managing, even though you don't have the problem, the issue of state fright, you are going to need these tips. So number one, be prepared. Rehearse your material. We can never overemphasize on the importance of getting prepared for your speech. No matter how good you are, no matter how long you've been in the job, you need to be prepared. So what do I mean by being prepared? You make your research, you get your materials together, ask possible questions that might arise from your topic or from the speech. So don't just say, um, I want to give the speech, I want to educate them and you're not expecting questions. Sometimes when some questions are thrown at you, you're taking unawares because you did not prepare for those questions. So when you're giving your clinical presentations, before you give your clinical presentation, make your research, get your materials together, rehearse with other people, maybe other people from your field, you understand? And then you ask, tell them to ask you questions that has to do with the speech you have given. So those questions, you might be surprised that those questions are the same questions you will get when you're giving the real presentation. So it will help you prepare even better. So another thing you should take note of, be, be open to criticisms, especially when you're rehearsing. Don't just expect everything to say, oh, wow, great job. Don't expect everyone to say that. 
be open to criticisms. Some people are good with constructive criticism. Other people that don't even know how to give it. So give them the benefit of the doubt and just get the message from whatever kind of criticism you get from that rehearsal you're making before you move on to the main speech. So that is it. And number two, number two is be punctual. Sometimes you might have prepared everything, you're done, you, you, you know you're good to go. But if you're not punctual, that's lateness or that, that uh, have, knowing, knowing that you're late already might just make you forget everything. Let's assume you have a presentation to make by, by 10 o'clock. I'm using Lagos for, for instance. You have a presentation to make by 10 o'clock in Lagos. Let's say University, Lagos State University teaching um, Unilag. You know that what it, the, no, the normal hours or the normal time it will take you to get to Unilag from Aja might be two hours without traffic jam. But you don't want to bank on that. You don't want to tell yourself, okay, it's two hours, give or take two hours, hours 30 minutes. No. So you don't want to leave your house by eight. You want to leave your house by seven or 6.30. Better, it's better for you to get there early and relax than for you to rush in there. You understand? So don't say this is the normal time to take me. Let me just add 30 minutes. You never can predict what will happen. What about the time that you, got, you, you get... Um, stopped by the police. Why don't you give time for that? What about the time that you there's an uh, unpredictable traffic jam in a particular place? Why don't you give time for that? Or the time you run out of fuel, not even knowing? Why don't you give time for that? So you want to give even one hour, 30 minutes before the normal time you, that it would take you to get, to get to that place. Because if you arrive late, it means you you will be rushing to that venue. And when you run to that venue, when you rush in, there's every tendency that you're panting. And when you're panting, you cannot give a powerful, an effective public speech. It's, it can't work. So apart from that, the people waiting for you would have already made their conclusions about you. Sometimes the eyes you see the people you see looking at you may just, you, you might just feel like having the ground swallow you at that point because you feel like, oh, those people, they don't, they, they're, they're looking at me this way because I came in late. So you need to be there on time. Take your, take your, your, your punctuality very seriously. It will help you. And then, The next is familiarize. Yes, you never can. You never can tell where you were called to give a presentation, your clinical presentation. So you need to be to familiarize. It's not every time you give speeches with people you already know. Sometimes you go to a place and you don't even know one person there. So you wouldn't say, ah. I didn't know anybody here. What am I going to do? I'm not sure these people are going to like me, blah, blah, blah. That is why you need to go early. You need to go early. Like we started this meeting earlier. If we had some people before, we had just three people. There were just two people or three people when I came, when I joined in. So if we had more people, I would have familiarized, okay, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Let me get to know you. I think we did that. Let me get to know you and that is it to help you feel like these people you're giving this presentation to are your friends. You know, if you're called, if you're called to give a speech in within in the midst of your friends, you would do that with confidence, right? You would do it with confidence. You know, there wouldn't be a case of state fright because these are your friends. So make those people your friends because it will help you speak with relaxation you're not going to be tensed so when you get there you family rise you get you greet them talk to them how uh what what are you into get to know them so that when they see you take the stage or the podium 
they will be like, wow, okay, this is the lady that um, came to us before the, the commencement of the event. Let's hear what she has to say. They will be willing to hear you out. So familiarity will make you speak with ease. It will make you speak with ease. So don't take that for granted. Don't, don't say those people, I don't know them. I need my space. Um, I don't know, let me just do this and leave this. No, you need to familiarize. Wherever you meet new set of people, don't take it for granted. Familiarize and network with them. You never can tell where you meet them in the future. So that is it about familiarity. It will help you speak with ease. So when I say familiarize, it mustn't, you, it's, you mustn't go into deep discussions with people you don't even know. Just, to, just a two to three minutes discussion will do. You talk briefly about something, you move on to the next person, you talk, you bring up a conversation, two to three minutes, you move, before you know it, you've engaged with about 10 people, then you can take the stage. While you're speaking, you're seeing those people you've already engaged with, and it will make you speak with, a, with relaxation. So that is it. And then number four, work hard on your introductions. This is like the, this is everything. Your introduction, before you get, make any presentation and a speech, your introduction is everything. Your introduction is what will make them want to listen to you. They say the human attention span is reducing. Everyone is always busy. Even those people you're going to give that presentation to, they are busy. Some of them might be there seated, but they are working at the same time. You see them on their phones. Some people might be attending a presentation or a meeting, and at the same time, they're attending another meeting with their phones. It happens like that. Even though they're not attending another meeting, some people, while you're speaking, they're just scrolling through Instagram or checking their mails or going through Facebook or LinkedIn. But what is that introduction you are going to give that will make them drop their phones to listen to you? What kind of introduction? Number one, you can make use of puzzles. You can make use of puzzles, maybe related to your topic, or even if it's not related to your topic, but make use of puzzles. Puzzles will make them want to rack their brains to get an answer to your question. Number two, you can make use of riddles. Riddles are almost the same as puzzles. You can make use of questions. Ask them questions. Ask them questions. By the time you do that, they are racking your brains to get an answer to your question. You can also, now this might sound crazy. It might sound crazy. I don't know if this can work in the clinical, clinical settings, but whatever it is you want to do to get the attention of your audience, you need to do. You can start with a song. Yeah. You can start with a song, so long as you know that you can sing the song very well, you do it. Now, this topic, the instance I want to give might not go well with um, a clinical setting, but let's assume that it is a topic on, um, on helping the poor. Let's assume you want to give a topic on helping the poor, giving arms. You might just choose a song like this, um, you know, Michael Jackson, everybody knows Michael Jackson and anybody, everybody can sing Michael Jackson's song. You just take the stage, you move on to the stage and then you go, there's a place in your heart and I know that it is love. This place, it was brighter than tomorrow. And then you move on to the chorus, heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are, you continue singing. At that point, everyone is captivated. Now you need to use something that is related to your topic. This is just another instance. Now at this point, everyone is captivated. Even that person that was operating her phone would drop a phone, who is this person? Who is this person that just, 
came to the stage and he or she is just singing for us. So that is it. That is another way you can introduce your topic. Now, it could be a song related to your topic, a song that everybody knows so that they can sing along with you. And by doing that, you are getting their attention. And you can only speak when you have get, you've gotten their attention. So that is it. You can also start with a, with a, with a fact or how do I put it? Something like this. Let's assume you want to talk about women empowerment. It has nothing to do, but this is just different instances. Let's assume you want to talk about, uh, okay, let me bring it down to your, to the clinical level. Let's assume you want to talk about people in the world that have died of malaria and you're trying to bring up a new malaria vaccine. I've been asking why is, why is it that there hasn't been a vaccine for malaria? I didn't know if there is, but something that you take and, and it, all for your lifetime, you can never contact malaria. So let's assume you want to talk about you, 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 you have a new product, a new vaccine for malaria, and you want to give a presentation in that, about that. You start with a, with a fact that would sweep everybody off their feet. You start with a fact, you make your research and, and ask and tell them, do you know that this percentage of people, let's say thousands of people die of malaria in the world or in Africa every week, these people are around our neighborhood. You give them a fact like that. It is wowing. Because sometimes you think people know all of these things, but they are just waiting for you to tell them before they can know about it. So when they hear that this great amount of people or percentage of people die of malaria, they begin to wonder, wow, this is really serious. And then you, you introduce the vaccine you have for malaria. Everybody would want to go through it. If you're going to make a proposal to a company, they would want to accept it. So that is it. And then um, the next is acquire speaking experience. Before you go for any presentation, acquire speaking experience. Now, what are the kind of speaking experience you can acquire? Start by speaking in small groups. Now, you see all those, your small groups, your, uh, what do they call it? Your church groups, your friends association, your different smaller groups. Don't be the type that listens to everybody, but nobody ever gets to hear your view. There are many people like that. Even your common WhatsApp group, the common WhatsApp group, your school group, your alumni group, don't be quiet. If you want to be a good presenter, a good speaker, don't always be quiet when certain issues are brought to the table. Rock your brain, don't say, oh, this is meant for them. I don't have time for that. No, you're not developing yourself. You're not building yourself. When I started, I know how many offers, I, I would even go and search for them. I will go and search for speaking offers. Let me speak to you. Don't, let me speak in your event. No problem. I'll do it for free. Even my WhatsApp groups, my NGO groups, I want to make sure that I am heard, that my ideas are, are heard. I don't just want to buy people's ideas. I want people to buy mine as well because I'm trying to build something in me. I'm trying to build that presenter in me. When I say presenter, I don't mean it, you have to be a TV presenter or a radio presenter, but I'm trying to develop myself. So don't think that people will always talk you down. You're not good enough to talk when these people are talking, no. So take it upon yourself to say, okay, this is the topic for today. This is the topic for today. I want to say something about it. If you don't know anything about it, Google is your friend. You ask Google, okay, how can I, then you say something, something good enough, something reasonable enough. Although not everybody will buy your idea, but at least you've said something and join in conversations. 
don't just be quiet. When you have your groups, your mini groups, uh, how do they, the, the, sometimes when you're in school, they group you in groups to give presentations. Don't just be the type that would say, okay, mm, that would not to everybody's idea. What about your own idea? Say something. You're building something in you by doing that. With that, you are going to be a powerful speaker. So that is it, acquire speaking experience. Start by speaking in smaller groups before you can take a speaking offer to, for a larger group. So that will really help you. Because when you speak in smaller groups, you might even call someone to ask you, to assess you. Okay, I spoke in this group today. How did I do? What are the things I should have done better? They will answer and they will tell you, okay, this is what you did that you shouldn't have done. This is what you you didn't do that you should have done. You always experience, you gather the, the experience, your your the things you, you should have done that you didn't do and all of the, the next presentation, you use that to equip yourself even more. And it's go, it continues like that. It continues like that and it goes on and on. So that is it. Acquire speaking experience. Now, number five. Number five, use the power of visualization. While preparing for your material, begin to imagine yourself addressing the audience. See them laughing at your jokes. You can never go wrong with jokes. Yes, when you're giving your presentations, you can never go wrong with jokes. Sometimes it's just like a comic relief. It eases everybody. So see them laughing at those jokes. See them nodding to what you say. So don't always, while you're preparing your material, don't always say, oh, I'm not sure they will like this presentation. Look, nobody is perfect. We only strive for perfection, but nobody is perfect. I'm not saying, um, you should always bring yourself down. No, but just know that nobody's perfect and know that from every failure, there is an experience. There is a lesson. Every failure is an experience that you gather to learn from. So don't say, ah, oh, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do it. Before, before coming to, before taking this presentation, I was like clinical presentation clinical presentation. I, I have never done anything that has to do with clinical, uh, medical, but I said, no problem, I will do this. I will do this. And here I am doing it today. So that is it. I may not be giving the clinical examples, uh, your medical terms, I may not be using that, but I want to believe that what I'm saying will help you when you are giving that clinical presentations that you are an authority in. So that is it. Don't look at people and say, or don't see it and say, oh, I don't think this is beyond me. I can't do it. No, I am going to fail. No, no. Visualize them nodding positively to what you're saying. It will help your mind. It will help you work on your mind. See them laughing at your jokes. See them say, yes, wow. It will help you when you're given the real presentation. Even though when you're given the real presentation, they don't do that. But within you, give yourself the benefit of the doubt that, wow, maybe they're not expressive, but they are really enjoying it. It will give you that confidence to speak even further. That is just it. So use the power of visualization. It is a thing of the mind, so maximize it. Then number six, concentrate on the importance of your message. This is very important. You see, speaking is not just about you. It is not just about how you look. It is not just about your, your speaking ability, how, how um, powerfully you speak and all of that. It is about the message. Without a message, there is no speech. Without a message, there is no speech. So what is the value of that message? How important is that message in the lives of the people 
you are going to be speaking to. Let's assume you want to talk about the negative effects of drug abuse to, to some teenagers that you're seeing, you, you're seeing as teenagers, you're seeing what they're doing and you're not comfortable. Yes, sometimes they abuse, they use these hard drugs on themselves now. Teenagers do it. And you see, you, you, you see it, you're disturbed. You want to speak to them, you want to talk to them. And then you're, you're asking yourself, oh, I'm not sure I am good enough to talk to this set of teenagers. I'm not sure I can do this. I'm not sure I am, you're always giving excuses. And then you hear one day that, oh, one of these people died because of excessive use of, because hard drugs. You would blame yourself. You would say, oh, I wish, I wish I had spoken to this person. Maybe this person would have had a change of mine and maybe turn around to, 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 to live a better life, you begin to blame yourself. So don't say it is about how, your, your, how good, you, how good you, you sound when you speak or how you're not good. Don't tell yourself that. It is about the message. Your message can change a life. Your message can save a life. That message you have to offer. It can change everything for a community, for a society, for an individual. Sometimes we have gifts to talk to people, but we just don't realize it. So you hear about suicide, suicide everywhere. People taking sniper. Sniper is meant to kill, to the best of my knowledge, rodents. But you hear people taking it as though it is tea. And you know you have this power, you have this speaking ability in you. You, are, you know that there's this, you are good with motivational speeches. You can talk to a set of people and they will be uplifted. They will no longer be demoralized because it is depression that makes people go for suicide. Why don't you, why don't you say something? Why don't you pass that message, that very important information you have to pass? It will save a life. So stop hiding. Come out and give that presentation, that powerful presentation, because you are made for more. You can give powerful presentation that would change everybody, that would change the society, change people around you. So it's just about organizing yourself well and I'm given now. So number seven, think positively. The fact that your previous presentations may not have gone well, doesn't mean the subsequent ones will not go well. I repeat this, the fact that your previous presentations may not have gone well, does not mean that your subsequent presentations will not go well. So don't say, oh, I failed on the previous one. This is not for me. I can't do this. I give up on this. I can't do this. No. Let me tell you, remember I said, every failure is an experience. Have you ever seen a successful person without, uh, without failures, without history of failures? No. We have Abraham Lincoln, bring it down to Nigeria. Uh, our president, do you know how many times he tried before he, he got elected in 2011 or what, what was that year again? He tried different times, I'm talking about democratically. So don't you ever give up. Don't say the fact that you've tried before and it did not go well means that it is not for you. What should you do? Ask yourself, why did that previous presentation not go away? Why is it that, what is it I should have done? Always have someone who will assess your presentation. What is it that I should have done that I do not do? Gather all those experiences and use it to make a better presentation in your subsequent ones. So don't, call, don't say, I cannot do this. Um, I have done it. 
10 times and it's not working well for me. So it means this is not for me. No, continue, continue. Just try to develop yourself every time. If you try to do something and it's not working out, don't do it the same way again. Do it in a different way. Don't do the same thing the same way and you're expecting a different result. It will not happen that way. You will not get a different result. You will keep getting the same result every time. So if you do it this time, it did not go well, try another way. If it doesn't go well, try another way. There are thousands of ways, millions of ways you can try. So that is it. And then, okay, number eight now is look good. Your looks will give you confidence. Before you take up any microphone, look good. Yes, you might say, uh, maybe it's just a present. Please, if you're the type who is who, who is okay with doing makeup, you do it. Make your hair nice, wear good clothes, look cheerful, looking good is not about everything you put on. Sometimes your smiles work like magic. So look good, because looking good is what? Good business. Your looks will give you confidence. It will make you speak with power and authority. So look good. And don't say, ah, let me just low key, low key. Uh, I don't need to. No, no low key when you're giving a presentation. You need to be at the top of your game. So always look good because looking good is good business. And it to make people give you this uh, very warm reception to make your, your audience even comfortable to listen to you. Because sometimes people feel uncomfortable when you're looking disturbing. When you're not looking good, sometimes it's disturbing to your audience. They are wondering, why is this combination? Why are you doing this? You understand? So you don't want to make them distracted. You want to always look good. So number 10, speak right. Speak right, work on your diction. Yes, I know it is about clinical, it is about pharmaceutical. Maybe you don't need to work on your diction. Maybe you just need to say the way I work on your diction. Your diction is your power. Your diction is your power. You want now, when I say work on your diction, I want to believe everything I have been saying, everyone has been following. You understand every word I pronounce. Speaking right, I will always say it. Faking your accent. You can hear me clearly. It is not about speaking through your nose. It is not about rolling your tongue at every point. Pronouncing because is because. That is not what speaking right is about. It is about clarity. Using the right stress placement, it shows a high level of intelligibility. Using the right intonation when you are speaking. That is why before they can, you can come up to the radio to speak, you have to, you need, a, you need to be very good with speaking because the people listening to you, they are not seeing you, they are not seeing your facial expressions, which will, in most cases, in, reinforce what you have said verbally. But all they, can do, all they can see is your voice. That's when you're doing the radio. So that is why, now, let's take it out of the radio. When you speak, sometimes your pronunciation could be misleading. Not everybody knows that there is a difference in these words, P-O-O-L and P-U-L-L. Everybody will call it pool and pool, but there's a difference. P-O-O-L is pool and P-U-L-L is pull. So when you need something, when you want to pull something, don't say pull it closer. You say pull it closer, not pull. Now, let me just give us a short, uh, a short story. Someone 
someone uh, wants, uh, let me use this too. Mr. A was asking Mr. B a question and he said, Mr. B, let me ask you a question. Do you know what Mr. B did? Mr. B brought out a gun, getting ready to defend himself. And Mr. A said, why are you bringing out a gun? I just want to ask you a question. So he said, I need to defend myself. I guess you want to ask me. I don't know whether you're going to get an ax from somewhere and ask me. So before you use the ax, I can be fast enough to use my gun. It's not a real story. It's just to tell you how, your, how the way you speak could be misleading. So he was supposed to say, ask, let me ask you a question. There are those clients I trained, uh, I think three months ago, he, he, he's from the UK. He said why he ran to my page was because he went to the supermarket someday and he met the attendant and said, I need, I need it so well. The attendant, because, because he has searched around, he couldn't find it, so he decided to go meet the attendant. He said, I need it too well. Too well. The attendant said, I, you know, the way with your British accent, towel, what do you mean by towel? I don't understand. Uh, too well. So we don't have that here. He said, too well, too well. And then he saw it and then pointed to it. And the attendant said, oh, you mean a towel? It's the correct pronunciation is towel and not too well. So you might say, ah, it is Nigeria. We don't need that. Forget it. Always be at the top of your game wherever you find yourself. If you have to speak the English language at all, if you consider the English language a language worth speaking, then speak it right. Speak it the right way. You can never mislead people when you speak the right way. And remember, speaking the right way is not about rolling your tongue, speaking through your nose, or, or just faking, uh, using the wrong intonation. No, it is about clarity. So that is it. Speak right. It makes people want to even listen to you. It it's increases your credibility. That is it. It's, it will open doors for you, many doors for you. So that's it. And then number 11, I have gone past my time. Okay, I think I have, uh, I just have two more points to go. I'm not seeing everyone. I don't understand what's happening. Nobody's video is turned on and I feel I am talking to myself. Yeah, with you. Okay. <laughs> At some point I thought I was talking to myself. Okay, thank you. So, number 11, your audience are your friends. Some people, you know, some people just sometimes just see people and they conclude. They conclude, ah, oh, these people would not like me. These people, like coming here, seeing everybody turning off their video, I might just conclude and be taken aback. Ah, uh, I'm not sure those people like my presentation, but no. No, I always give people the benefit of the doubt. I know that you cannot leave here today without learning something. I am very confident of that fact. And because I am confident of that fact, I want to do more. Now your audience are your friends. Don't say, oh, these people, they're not. Maybe you've had maybe an issue with a certain group of people before. And you say, you just assume and conclude that they would not like your presentation, no they are your friends. So when you consider your audience, your friends, you would speak with authority, you would speak with power, you would speak with ease, never feel intimidated. I know we have doctors here, we have professors here, people that on a good day, I cannot even stand in, in their presence to speak, but I am not taken aback. I am not in any way feeling intimidated because I know what I've got and you should know what you've got as well. You might make some mistakes, but yes, we are not perfect. People make mistakes. 
you should only learn from your mistakes and don't drown in them. So that is it. Don't feel intimidated. Always be at the top of your game and it will help you on the long run. And the last point, breathe, breathe. Before you go to speak, especially when you feel intense, you do this, breathe in, out. You do that like 10 times and it will help you calm your nerves. You'll feel relaxed. You just realize, that, oh, this world is a wonderful place after all. Why am I feeling tense? Or sometimes you can display uh, this music. I relax with the music like this when I'm feeling tense and I feel everything is just upon me. I see trees in there and I said to myself, what a wonderful world. Music, songs like that will help you relax. So that is it. Thank you very much. And I hope I did not speak out of line. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your presence. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mom. My pleasure. You'll agree with me that that was a wonderful presentation. So nice to have you on board, Mom. So doing justice to the topic of today, which is delivering your clinical presentation with power and confidence, was by Mrs. Catherine Oyejiaka. Thank you very much, Ma. My pleasure. Yes. So I briefly, I'd like to recognize some of the dignitaries in our midst. We have with us the immediate past chairman of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Kwara State Branch, Pharmacist Bakao Oyinloye Ali. It's good to have you here, sir. We also like to appreciate the presence of Dr. Ademola from Uganda, and also um, Dr. Abraham from US, the Director of Pharmaceutical Services in our midst, and also the HODs in our midst. Thank you very much for joining us. So um, we'll, we'll be going into the question and answer section. Hey. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. So we're going to the question and answer section and I'd like each and every one of us to come up with questions. But if we don't want to speak up, we can use the box chats, the, the chat um, box, sorry, to send in our questions for Mrs. Catherine to go through them and answer the questions. So I'd like to open the floor if I need. <laughs> no problem, you can. Okay. So um, my question is on diction because I discovered that in Nigeria, like you rightly said, a lot of people feel that speaking well has to do with rolling your tongue or talking through your nose. And then they end up modeling up their sentences. So I'd just like to ask, how can we work more on our diction and not fake it? Like to actually develop the right diction, either for British English or for you know the American English without faking addiction. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much for that question. I would say there is no end to knowledge. If you don't want to get a training, there's so many presentation tips on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, they have different pages that will help you. So that is, if you don't want to, if for someone who doesn't want to pay for it, just wants to learn slowly and steadily. I have someone who, came, who, who registered for my training. The person speaks very well, but maybe some just finishing touches. She speaks so well. I asked her, have you registered for, did you register for any training before now? She said, no, that she has, she has been following some um, pages on Instagram and some um, from YouTube. And she's been working on herself, although gradually, and she was able to achieve that eloquence. So if you are determined to do that, you can do it. You can also register for trainings. You can buy uh, pronunciation CDs. You can buy online pronunciation courses. You can do all of those. So I, I believe if you want to be good in any field, you just need to take a professional course on that field and you're good to go. So that will really help. Thank you. You're welcome. 
So please, let's kindly unmute ourselves and ask our questions. They can raise their hand if they have any question. So they can ask the question. I'd like to recognize the presence of Dr. Felicia Williams as well from the Department of Clinical Pharmacy, University of Illinois. Happy to have you on board, ma'am. Thank okay, you. Okay, there's a, there's a question from Mr. Olumi Deshoyemi. So the question says, what advice do you have for a person who wants to make a presentation to a group whose accent is different from yours? Okay, <laughs> different from mine? Did you get that, Ma? Yes, I got it. You don't need my accent. You don't need my accent. You don't need to speak the way I speak. So long as you're clear. I believe everyone has, a, even people I train don't speak like me. So you have your different way. Maybe you, maybe what you, you're trying to say is who does not speak or try to observe their pronunciations the way I do. If, it's, if that is what you mean, then you will just have to improve on it. Yes, but don't let that take you back because I, I gave how many tips today? About 12. So that's just one out of 12. It does not mean you cannot give a powerful presentation without maybe observing the right diction. No. Yes, at the end of the day, people will understand you. But there's something called, ah, uh, this person, there's some, it's just to spice it up. Spice it, to spice it up and to sound clearly, not to mislead anyone with your pronunciation. Sometimes some people need to spell some words. Which pool are you talking about? Is it P-O-O-L or P-U-L-L or P-U-L-L? When, but, but if you have, if you're speaking right, you don't need to do all that. You understand? So you don't need my accent. You don't need to speak the way I speak. Do you, but do it right. Speak the way you speak, but try to improve in the way you speak every day. So not just diction, your diction is not the only thing that will make you get have a powerful presentation. No, there are many other things. There are many other factors. So just try to improve yourself in these different fact factors I have highlighted. So that's just it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, is there any other question for Mrs. Catherine? Hello. Hi. Hello, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Catherine, we really appreciate the confidence and poise that you displayed, despite you're in the midst of professionals. Like you rightly said, uh, you have never made any presentation to this kind of uh, profession, professionals. But the fact that you are confident, your poise shows that you are very good at making presentations. And they're bringing these kind of skills to clinical presentation can be very captivating. So we really appreciate you and want to encourage you to continue in the same way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Any other comments or question? Can I make a comment? Yes, please, sir. Go ahead. Okay, um, uh, this is just a, a comment on how I was able to get rid of my stage fright. I started with my, with my family, with my wife and, and kids. And I have uh, my first daughter, she, she will criticize you like an adult. <laughs> so <laughs> I will sit in front and read stuff to them and she will, I mean, basically destroy me. So it was a, a good learning, learning experience. Just, just a tip for everybody, if you don't want to 
you don't want to face the public. I wonder if a uh, guest speaker has a comment about that, about using yes. that tactics. Yes, that is very important. First, I love the fact that you, you mentioned that your first daughter would criticize you. So some people might want to take that for granted, but if you know what presentation is, you would want to accept that criticism and accept even more in advance. Because when you give the real speech, you might even get more, far more than what she did. So she's helping you prepare. Remember what I said before you acquire, before you speak in larger audiences, you start with smaller groups. So the smaller group could be your family, your friends. You understand, tell them to criticize you. If you speak and everybody said, wow, great, 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 then know that <laughs> these people are not telling you the truth. You understand, tell them to tell you where you were. I always want to do that, especially when I go for any training and they tell me, okay, come and make your presentation. Even when I did my uh, on-air personality training, it's, um, everybody's like, Catherine this, Catherine that, because they saw me on Instagram and they feel Catherine is everything. I said, no, please tell me where I have gone wrong because you're not encouraging me. If you don't tell me where I have gone wrong, then I'll just keep doing the, the same thing on the same level. So I need you to tell me where I've gone wrong so I can improve. So that is it. That is a very good one. Now, just to lighten up the mood a bit, my daughter would do the same thing to everybody that comes to the house. You dare not pronounce any word the wrong way. She will correct you. No, Uncle Mike, it is this. It is not television, it's television. She will correct you on the spot. She, you even get tired of her. So children are like that and you encourage them to do it, but just advise them to do it with, with a cautiousness and respect so that nobody goes out there to slap them one day. But that is a good, that is a good one. Well done, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma. And thank you, Dr. Malik, for your comments. Um, if there's any other question, or comments, additions, as the case may be. Pharmacist Grace Joshua, let's have your comments. Pharmacist Grace. Can you hear us? Um, Grace. Yes, I can. Let's yes, have your comment. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. I really appreciate it. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Wonderful. Nice. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I want to add that Mrs. Kirchner has not only for pharmacists, but for children and people okay. going up. They can okay. buy from. That's my comment. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. OK, that's nice. Maybe we'd have to get across to her after today's presentation. Yes. All right, I didn't get what uh, Dr. Bello said. I said uh, uh, Mrs. Kirchner has some products that can, that can, that can, that can our, our children can use to improve the addiction and they have the so we can meet a little for those products. Uh, okay, that's fine. Yes. Okay. So in the absence of further questions and comments, because of our time, can we have the vote of thanks from Dr. Adiola Kola Mustafa? Hello, Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, um, thank you very much for the honor. And I thank the presenter. It was something different. And I'm, I'm happy I attended the lectures. It was something different. And it's something that is, um, resonates with everyone. There is no medical pr practitioner that wouldn't need to present at any point in time. So thank you very much, Madam, for all the tips you've given us and it's all well taken. And 
the thank you to the um to the director of um uh, of um the uh, pharmacy department university of uh, uh, Lawrence teaching hospital for always giving the platform for all the same um, presentations and all the organizing committee the education committee um, headed by dr billo and everyone that's worked to make this come up every week we are all proud of the university of Lawrence teaching hospital department of pharmacy for what all they do every week it's unique and it's been um, a lot of um, um, resource for everyone. And thank you everyone. We don't take people that join in for granted. Using your data to join in, it's something that we appreciate. And then we thank you for always being there. And of course, we thank God for, for life. We thank God for, for the wisdom. And we thank God for the capability to actually, you know, taking everything that we are being taught every week. Thank you very much. And thank God for all, all, all we have. Thank you. Thank so you. Nice seeing everyone. Thank you, yeah, Dr. Nice Kola Musa. Thank for you, day. How Thank are you, you doing the code? Dr. Musa. <laughs> Thank you very much. You, I'm How is Dr. Tuli? It's cold, but I'm wearing my tummy. Ah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. We wish you safety. Thank you very much. So once it is done, thank you. Next year it will be another day for us. We thank you, Miss Kishin. Thank you for having me. Enjoy. Thank you for it's honoring. Good to be in the midst of high-profile people like the doctors from different parts of the world. I feel honored. Thank you. It is by Dr. Imola. Thank you, Dr. Abraham. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. Right. Thank you. Next year is going to be another day. Thank you yes. so much.